Hey guys, Bo here with Bo V Arts, and today we're going to talk about how to make a nice convincing water effect. So I have, well first off, I want to talk about, thank you for sticking with me because I've taken an absence from YouTube and social media. I probably won't be returning to Instagram or Twitter anytime soon in the foreseeable future because you kind of get in that habit where you start painting things just to upload them and get likes and followers, and that's just really bad for your creativity, all right? You're going to drain yourself. So don't get into that habit. If you see yourself doing that, then just kind of take a break because you'll get really burnt out very quickly. So I wanted to do a tutorial. I was out walking around getting some uh, inspiration looking at it had just rained here in Texas, so I was looking at reflections, and it reminded me of how much I love doing landscapes. It's what I actually started doing in digital art. So uh, let's show you how to do some uh, some no-nos <laughs> and some yeses. So the first thing you want to do is get kind of your landscape. I just have some really crappy trees on here just to have a you know place marker uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. So. Watch other tutorials on, you know, ranges of values, highlights, things like that on landscapes because it's really important. But let's say for the tutorial's purpose, you're at this point to where you have some uh, trees and you just don't know how to do water. The first thing I see people do is they kind of put some paint down on the canvas and they start swirling around the smudge thing because they think water just moves in whichever direction. And for the most part, that does happen depending on how it's disturbed but water is highly reflective so that's kind of where the second mistake I see comes in so people will take like an image like this and they'll make a copy of it and flip it and there's their water you know they'll change the opacity so you can do water like that the only issue is it's very rare that water just sits completely undisturbed right because you'd have to have like zero mile an hour wind no bugs or you know animals pooping or landing in it um, just it's very rare that you see water completely undisturbed there are a few instances that I've seen like on um, in photography where you'll you'll see you know mountains and there's a nice crystal clear lake so that it does happen I'm not saying it doesn't happen but in paintings uh, it doesn't really look very convincing all right so what you want to do is you know what let's take this color here let's brighten up a color because water is very reflective and we see that up here we have a nice bright color for a sky. Actually we can go a little bit lighter than that. So let's just lighten this area a little bit. Actually we can even come down here and do it. It doesn't matter. So we want to make sure we have that reflective property and I kind of like to keep my corners of my painting dark. Um, it just kind of brings the focal point in sometimes. I don't know it's just a habit. Anyway not important, right? So the real kicker here is what you're going to do is get a nice straight line here on the base of whatever it is you're drawing, trees, ground, shrubbery. And let's see if this works here. It's a little bit too strong, so let's adjust our strength here. Let's see, let's go like 40 or 50. So I'm gonna go about 30. So you wanna take your smudge tool, it does involve smudge tool. And I'm actually going to use a hard edge. Let's go and use a hard edge. And you want to find a nice brush to do this with too, right? That's going to be kind of more the effect that I want. Hold down shift. That's very important. And you want to start smudging down. And what you're doing when you're smudging is you're somewhat emulating the shape of the top of the object that you're smudging. Not too important, but just kind of work your way down, right? So you can see here that already kind of a really cool effect is starting to take place. Now, if you don't hold down shift while you're smudging, you have the tendency to maybe go left or right. And that's when you immediately can see that the effect is lost. And I see people do this all the time. So you want to make sure that you're controlling these strokes very evenly. And what it does is these trees that aren't very convincing, it actually helps them be a little bit more convincing as well. So let's come over here and I'll tell you what, we'll kind of come full circle with this. And make these trees a little bit longer. Let's come in here and make these a little bit lighter. And 
and you just want to go back over and kind of touch up. Still holding down shift. You can use a different brush. You can change the sizes. Um, I like to kind of keep everything consistent because water is a consistent when still like this. So you might be saying, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good start. Also, you can also change down here. Let's change down the opacity, and then we can take the the ends of these here and kind of make them lighter, right? Because you can see our treetops are pretty light. Or the other option is you can take your eraser and go like a 10% and cut through the uh, the bottom of your trees like that, right? Here, let's go a little bit lighter. Sorry, I'm not going to edit my voice in this. I'm just going to tackle it. So we're at this point, and you're thinking, okay, that looks really cool. Now, the next thing you need to do, there's one more thing that you do to really sell the illusion here. So get a nice color, kind of the color of the sky, a really light blue. And let's see, let's see what color we're going to use for this. That's about right. We're going to change the opacity down. We're going to use a hard edge, all right? Don't use a soft edge, use a hard edge. And we're going to go pretty small on the brush size here. And what you're going to do is you're just going to give the slightest indication. Hold down shift again. Sorry, this is really hard to do with talking. It's been a while. And you're going to go along the tree line here, and you're going to make some ripples. Maybe some of them come out this way, and that gives the impression that the land is extending. Now, you don't want to give ripples all along. You don't want to just do this constant you know, line because it's not going to be very convincing. So maybe this one comes out too, right? You can go a little bit lighter than this if you want with your opacity, but I've found that this is pretty effective. We can go 40, have some nice effects, right? Maybe some of them go way back there. Doesn't matter. So what this is going to do is it's going to separate your smudges from the actual tree line. And now you have ground, right? So let's come back over here and maybe a couple of these are a little bit lighter than others. And you can also extend out here and start doing ripples. But they have to be straight, so that's the main key. That's the main point I'm getting at here. I know I'm a little bit all over the place. I haven't done a tutorial in a while. But they have to be straight. If you make your ripples like this, then look, the illusion of the water breaks. But if you do it straight, it's a lot more convincing. So you can come out here and give a little bit of a ripple action. But the priority should be back here. So we're going to come back. We're going to add a little bit more noise. I think I want this to be a busy area back there. As water butts up against something, you know, the illusion ends, right? The mirror ends. It's broken. It's a little bit too much. You know, as cliche as this sounds, you can watch a lot of Bob Ross. And this is a technique, both the smudging and uh, the ripples are something that I've adapted from his painting. So there you go. You can come out here and you can make a couple more ripples. That's up to you. But I wanted to show you um, just kind of an easy way to do it. And the smudges, you can really work on the smudges. You can spend a lot of time doing this, right? It doesn't have to look exactly like this and that's the really cool thing about this is normally everything that you do looks um, different you know it's just gonna have a different effect and then you can even play around I've had things that like space planets and stuff like that that I've I've done and uh, you know I've put on some overlay and here let's get some darker overlay here you can kind of play around with uh, the colors a little bit and uh, make areas darker or purple or you know you can get some really cool effects out of this here let's bring some pink into this this is really cool doing this and it's a trick I've done it's really effective bring some till here
right? So you can just really spend a lot of time um, personalizing and making some really cool scenery this way and spending time on those smudges, spending time on the ripples, things like that. But it's a really quick way that probably took us, what, five, ten minutes. And uh, just kind of a cool secret I wanted to show you guys. So let me know in the comments below what you thought. Let me know if there are any other things you'd like to see. These quick tutorials are really cool. They work for me right now because I've been staying pretty busy. But thanks for tuning in and thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you on Discord and uh, in the comment section. Bye, guys. Thank you. Trying to end this. Try, try and do...